Brian Brown and Chase Randall, Brad Sweet and Corey Day, Justin Peck and Zeb Wise, Brent Marks, Spencer Baston, Rico Abreu, and Roger Crockett, the top 10 starters. I-70 Speedway, we got them racked, we got them stacked, and we've got the grandstands packed. Let's go racing off at turn number four. We are green. Chase Randall leads the field into turn number three. Here comes Brad Sweet. Look at Corey Day. Corey Day under Brad Sweet. Move him into the third spot. Sweet battles back into turn three. Chase Randall showing the way. Brian Brown tries to put a slider on him. Can't get there in time. Chase Randall leads lap number one. Brian Brown second. Brad Sweet third. Corey Day and Zeb Wise now looking underneath the Corey Day into turn number one. Zeb Wise looking for the fourth spot. Can't get there in time. Oh, boy, that was close right there. Corey Day maintains fourth. Boy, that was a close call between Zeb Wise and Corey Day. And here comes Justin Peck. Roll the bottom. He'll try to go two for one. Shoots across the nose of base. Baston slides underneath him in Sunshine. Tyler Courtney right there. What a battle for fifth and sixth. Great race there as Sunshine trying to make his way towards the front of the field. His closest championship rival, Brad Sweet, runs in the third spot. Now Sunshine looked underneath of, of Justin Peck, but Peck shut the door on him right there. Sunshine tries to run the bottom. Mike gets circled right there. Nearly got circled by the 19 of Brent Marsh. Remember, he is the first dice roll driver trying to make his way towards the front of the field. Now Peck trying to close it on Baston just ahead of them. And here comes Brent Marks trying to storm back to the back bumper of Tyler Courtney. He'll look a lane below Courtney and greet the high side. Keep in mind, as Chase just said, our Durst Dice Roll winner, the 19 of Brent Marks, is trying to move forward and pick up some extra cash here tonight, Chase. Chase Randall showing the way up on the top side of the racetrack. Lap Tyler traffic. Courtney. Tyler Courtney, a problem. He's pulling into the infield. There's some damage on the front end, it looks like, Blake. Locked up. He That's just dove caution. off the high side of turn number two there, Chase, right down into the infield. and. Boy, is that big points implications, Chase Rodman. Absolutely huge implications here. We'll see what happens. Well, hopefully we have a, re a replay coming up here in a moment on flow, but they're going to have to take that NOS Energy Drink number 7 BC car to the work area. This is a huge moment in this championship fight. He came in 16 points behind. Brad Sweet, here is the flow racing replay, Blake. Watch him off the high side of turn two. It just dives down to the inside right about now. Oh, wow. Just locks up the whole front end. And then he almost watched this right at the end. He kind of hits a little right about here. Yeah. Ooh. Just to add I insult think he was to injury. up enough yeah. there. Yeah, luckily, you know, she's got some air time there. So we'll see what they do. It, they might have to pick that car up off the yeah. ground, Tony. They've already got a whole front end assembly set out here, ready to go. They're putting on the uh, right front tire for it, Chase uh, and Blake. Noisy, and uh, you got Zach Middlebrooks from the uh, 24 crew. You got a bunch of guys down here jumping down to help out. 16 points was the margin behind Brad Sweep to Tyler Courtney coming into tonight. So you guys said it already, but championship implications early on in this one. I got to think BC would be proud of what this 7BC team has been able to accomplish the last couple of seasons. Oh, absolutely. He's been absolutely stellar. I think he's got three wins this year with Highland Racing and uh, eight second place finishes, <laughs> eight of them. That was not like me exaggerating. He actually has eight of them. He had that streak there to start the year of oh, podium man. finishes. Yeah. It was every night Sunshine was on the podium and they got the new front end going in there. I see Kevin Naus, the tech director for about high limit racing overlook and Logan now that drives the pace truck most of the time there. Fudd from uh, Brent Marks is number 19 crew had the whole front end assembly ready to go in his hands. They had uh, just a little bit of, uh, of a sticky moment getting that old assembly out of the front end of this race car. But just as quickly as they got that old assembly out, they've got the new one in you guys. They're already working on putting torsion arms back on top, rebolting shock towers in here, connecting radius rods. Hopefully they'll drop this thing down and be able to refire the 7BC. It seems like a pretty routine front end swap down here not much time, time, time left yeah not much time left the field is doubled up and but as we always know they'll keep plugging away because if you get yep. that yellow before we get a lap complete let's see here yeah we're going green next time by lights are going out it looks like they are not going to have enough time and this if if it we stay green for at least a lap and they don't come back onto the racetrack blake this would be the first dnf of the year for the 7 BC car with Kubota Highlander Racing. Not bad on June 7th. Yes, not bad at all, 20, 22 races into the season. They've got that car. Yeah, Looks like it's close, Tony. They're calling to set it down. They're trying to lower the front end here, and they're waiting for the push the push Jeep to pull up or the push quad, but there's confusion down here with high limit officials. The teams know they're coming to green. They did not get it down in time, but you guys hit on it. If they do not complete the slap, Courtney can get back out. Thank you very much, Tony. Green flag coming back out. We're back underway here at I-70. Wow, close quarters action right there on the restart between Brian Brown and Chase Randall. Corey Day going to go by two cars. Gets by Sweet, gets by Brown, and Corey Day's up to P2. Look at Brian Brown, though, storming back to the inside. Brian Brown picks off two down the back stretch. Day cuts down to the inside. Battle for seconds. Good. Corey Day's got it at the line. Corey Day had some practice with this.
this in the dash earlier on with Justin Peck was throwing sliders every single lap of that seven lap event as there goes Brad Sweet across the nose of Brian Brown. Brown back to the inside, but Corey Day, him and his other young contender, Chase Randall, going to go at it and duke it out for the race win here tonight at I-70 Speedway. Now Day has got his sights set on Chase Randall. Texas first, California as Brown tries to rope them in. He's bringing Brad Sweet with him. Zeb Wise running out the top five, closing it on halfway this time by 17 to go for Chase Randall. And Corey Day closing in. Corey Day, a huge turn down the hill, ran the cushion into turn number three, then turned it way down on the exit of turn number four, closed in a little bit that last time by on Chase Randall. Brian Brown running in second, or sorry, running in the third spot. Then it's Brad Sweet in fourth. Zeb Wise rounds out the top five this time by. Still a long ways to go in this race. Interesting to watch the leaders off at turn number four, Chase. Chase Randall keeps it on the high side. Corey Day diamonds off the corner off of turn number three in the entry to four and dives down to the inside. And now he'll go down to the bottom this time around, not diving out the corners. Chase Randall pulls away a little bit more. We'll see if the lap times will look a little bit different here. The last time by is 16.27 for Chase Randall, a 16.61 for Corey Day. So Chase Randall pulling away after Corey Day tried to run the bottom in turns number three and four. Randall, though, will see traffic up the road. He's maybe two laps away from Roger Crockett. Brad Sweet slider for the third spot. Brad Sweet's up to third. Brad Sweet into third. Spencer based it into the fifth spot. Pass Seb Wise. But traffic, as you said, Chase, is looming for Chase Randall, your leader. The advantage Chase Randall has is right now the traffic, the first five or so cars, all on the bottom of the racetrack. Yep, all on the very inside of the speedway. Going to give an open lane to the 2KS cars. He makes his way to the top of the racetrack in turns one and two. Corey Day trying to find a way to close in on him. Brad Sweet still maybe about 20 or so car lengths behind the number 14 car. Traffic officially in play for Chase Chase Randall as he's catching up to the number 12X of Roger Crockett. Here comes Corey Day up at turn number four. Corey Day cut that advantage in half. Day looming on the bottom. Chase Randall continuing to ride the fence around I-70, but Corey Day right there. The advantage he has, though, well, now they all go down to the bottom. Chase Randall moves off the top to the bottom, and Corey Day follows suit. What an impressive maneuver right there from Chase Randall to know to get to the inside of the racetrack as he's now got to deal with Roger Crockett, but we talked about it a few laps ago. The lap cars were on the bottom when Randall was on the top. Now Randall runs the bottom, and all the lap cars are down there as well, and Corey Day maybe to chip in the lead a little bit more this time by. Things starting to move to the bottom of the racetrack. Lap time's not picking up, though, Chase, as Chase Randall starts to really close in on the back of the pack, and this is where things get very interesting, Chase Rodman. How does young Chase Randall handle lap traffic? Nine laps to go this time by, trying to find a way by the 45X of Chase Park. Car up the road is hammering the wall. It's the one car, Brenham Crouch. Here comes Corey Day, closing in. Three car lengths down the back straightaway. The battle for the lead at I-70 Speedway between the 2KS of Chase Randall and the 14 of Corey Day. Corey Day turning the heat up on Chase Randall and Brad Sweet. Look who's joining the party. Brad Sweet closing in on your top two with eight to go. Brad Sweet closing in. The five-time Outlaw champion is now joining the fray. The veteran trying to hold on. He's trying to get up there and challenge these two, what you would call rookies in comparison to his career. Off of turn number four, Chase Randall up to the back bumper of Chase Park. He's got to try and do something here, Blake. He cannot sit behind him. Makes him maybe a little mistake yeah. right there, and Corey Day closes in. Last time, Chase Chase Park missed the bottom off of turn number four, and that left the door open for Chase Randall. Here comes Brad Sweet closing for second. But Chase Randall's going to have to find a way, if he can find a way, past the lap cars. That's going to give him the breathing room he needs. Chase Park slides up the track again, but right now, Corey Day's on the back bumper, ready to pounce. And around the outside goes Corey Day. He's going to take the lead down the back straightaway. Chase Randall tried to keep the car pinched off on the edge of the turn number two, and it's going to cost him. Corey Day leads with five laps to go. You have to wonder, is Chase Randall getting a little bit tight down there on the bottom as he can't seem to hold the two kids complete to the bottom? And here goes Corey Day pulling away, but Day has thick lap traffic in front of him. This one's not over with four to go. Randall closing back in in turn four. Sometimes it's better to be the car in the second position. He's in the catbird seat now. Chase Randall still right there with Corey Day. Day to the back bumper of Chase Park. Tries to get underneath him. Cannot do it. Chase Randall still right there. Four car lengths. They work back into turn number three. Corey Day leads. Here comes Chase Randall once more. Laps winding down. Three laps remaining for Corey Day with Chase Randall. Two car lengths behind him. Brad Sweet not far behind as well. The top three nearly nose the tails. They make their way through one and two. Corey Day slips up off the bottom. Chase Randall cannot make the pass. This time by two laps to go. They cannot get by the slower car. Chase Park off a of turn number four. Two to go. Nearly identical situation. Chase Wadham is what we saw for Corey Day to slip by. Chase Randall last time by. Can Chase find the opening? Corey Day holds it to the bottom and starts to pull back away. Puts five car lengths 
on Chase Randall. Time starting to run out this time by White Flag, one to go. White Flag, one to go. Corey Day trying to maintain the pace of the 45X at Chase Park. Does not want the 2KS at Chase Randall to make a move around the outside as they make their way off of turn number two. Corey Day pulls away six car lengths. He'll make his way into turn number three. And for the first time since Riverside a few weeks ago, he is finally back in victory with Kubota Highland Racing. It is Corey Day. Brad Sweet gets by Chase Randall the line for second. Randall ends up third. Brian Brown fourth and Spencer Baston in fifth. That was one of those awkward moments as the leader, Blake, where you yeah. just cannot figure out how to get by the lap car. The lap car is almost the same speed. And how Man. hard do you push it? Yes. You... Man, I wonder what happened. 18. 18 years old, gets the job done with the win. Brad Sweet finishes in second. Chase Randall third, a great run by him. Oh, well, Corey Day's flying through the <laughs> infield there, getting a little X Games jump there. Brian Brown fourth, Spencer based in fifth. Zeb Wise, James McFadden, Brent Marks, Justin Peck, and Rico Abreu, the top 10. Behind them, Tanner Thorson, Corey Eliason, Anthony Macri, Cy Lynch, Jacob Allen, Ayrton Jenneton, Chris Windham, Parker Price Miller, Brenham Crouch, and Casey Kane. Behind him, it was Roger Crockett, Jace Park, Tyler Courtney, and Hunter Schurenberg, the 24 car field. Race fans, for the fourth time in 2024, Corey Day is a winner with Kubota High Limit Racing. Climbs off the back of the race car. And he is certainly going to be happy with a half-mile victory here tonight. As you guys mentioned, right before he made his way to Whiskey Myers Victory Lane, these guys have struggled on these types of tracks, but tonight they conquered it. High fives coming in from Noisy. Stefan Sadur down there as well. He'll, climb, he'll go around the front of the race car and meet up with Tony Laporto as a winner tonight. All right, Corey Day, you know what we're going to talk about. Every time we see you in the pit area, you're joking and maybe not so joking about how you don't like coming to these big tracks, how you think you perform on them. Well, tonight, this is a big track. You're standing in Whiskey Myers' victory lane. How do you feel about these bigger race tracks now these days? Ah, oh, man, uh, you know, I think I like this one a little bit better. Uh, maybe not maybe not the other ones that we haven't been too great at, but, uh, you know, we ran ran with the All-Stars here last year and went, uh, went 17th to 4th, and, um, you know, we kind of just kind of, you know, went off of that notebook a little bit and uh, just, you know, thought really long and hard about what we what we should do with our with our race car. And, um, you know, I'm glad, I'm glad we uh, thought right. <laughs> Now you're out of breath, which tells me that that race was a lot of hard work. You and Chase Randall had a phenomenal battle. You talked already about going 17th to fourth here the last time you came to I-70 Speedway, but I want to talk about something you, you just mentioned, the notebook. Shane Bowers, your crew chief, has been here before with uh, Brock Zierfoss was the driver that he referenced to me. So when you've got a crew chief that's been to a track like this before, you've got in-seat experience at a track like this before, what are you guys able to do and, and how does that help you? Yeah, I think it helps a lot. Uh, you know, when we went to all those new tracks in April, they were they were short tracks and kind of you know right up right up my driving style alley and uh, you know right up what we do in California as alleys. So uh, we can kind of almost use our notes from California uh, for those tracks. And then these places we've been going this past month, you know, we couldn't couldn't use our notebook and we you know never been there before. So uh, really crucial to to be at a place where you can use your notebook and uh, helps when helps when Shane's been there and uh, helps when I've you know had laps on it too. So um, yeah and. I am exhausted, man. Running a running a rubber race takes a lot of a lot of mental mental strength to, you know, to stay in the rubber, and especially when it's like that, and uh, you don't exactly know where it's at. It's not really defined. So, um, just you know, a lot of a lot of mental strength to hold the race car straight and and to not miss it. So, um, yeah, glad glad we get away with that one, and um, just got to give a huge thanks to Shane and uh, Stefan, Jordan. This is Jordan's first win with us. So that's cool, and uh, you know, big thanks to my mom, my dad, Jason. My, Myers and Preston Cross at home and uh, everyone else at home that's uh, that you know supports us and helps us get out here. Well, it's not a California bull ring. It's a big, wide, flat, fast track here in Missouri. You've conquered it, and as a Kubota High Limit High Roller, you get to send a thousand dollars of our angel donors' money to a charity of your choice. Who are you supporting tonight? Uh, Driven to Save Lives for sure. Uh, Driven to Save Lives supports me and in my race program, and uh, so I'm gonna support them with that thousand dollars. And with that thousand dollars, twenty-five grand has been supported by our angel donor and High Limit Racing. Corey Day, you've got a 50-50 ticket to here. Pull really quickly for us. We're gonna pull up the amount here that is gonna be paid out. Looks like six hundred ninety dollars for our 50-50 ticket. You want to read that, or you want me to? Uh, two zero four six two two. One more time. Two zero four six two two. Ladies and gentlemen, for the fourth time this season, Corey Day's a winner with High Limit. We'll keep moving here and 
work our way down the podium and check in with the rest of our top three drivers here after a really exciting run at I-70 Speedway. Brad Day, uh, Brad Sweet, that's Corey Day that stands on the top of the podium. He uh, gets his fourth win of the season. You guys were working really hard there. Talk to me about this racetrack tonight and how fast it was <laughs> and the fact we beat the rain. Yeah, and hats off to the, the High Limit crew and, and I-70 Speedway for beating the rain. I mean, obviously, when rain's coming, you'd like to do a little more track prep just to, to make sure you don't get rubber, but we just didn't have a lot of time tonight, and so they did the best they could, and ultimately, it was still a good race. I mean, it was a good, a good battle there, and, you know, the rubber came in, but it wasn't, you know, super aggressive rubber. You still had to be really patient in it, and, uh, you know, there were still some different lines, but, yeah, ultimately, uh, for the first night, you want to get locked in, do those better spots in the heat tomorrow, and you want to run top four tonight. So it's all about the, the big money tomorrow night and, uh, you know, the Race Rudine Foundation race. So can't thank Kevin Rudine enough for, for helping put this event on and uh, can't thank my Napa Auto Parts guys for, for giving me a good car tonight. Uh, it's fun to have my wife and daughter here and uh, just uh, excited to be racing and uh, excited that we beat the rain and excited that uh, we get to come back and try again tomorrow. And with Tyler Courtney's DNF, Brad Sweet's championship point lead is bolstered quite heavily. Brad brings up a great point. The top four finishers on tonight, because it's a two-day show, will not have to qualify tomorrow afternoon, and they will get the best qualifying positions for the heat races tomorrow evening. Chase and Blake can probably get a little bit more into the format and how all that works out. Chase Randall is a third-place finisher with Kubota High Limit Racing, fresh off a couple of wins in Knoxville, Iowa, with the weekly series. But this this is a totally different crowd. How good does it feel to come out here and run top three with a national touring series? It, it feels amazing, you could say, but, uh, you know, to have so much speed, you know, the past couple of weeks, he wanted to come down here and, you know, see kind of how he stacked up against some of the big guys. And, you know, I feel like we, you know, we achieved a lot of our goals that we had to come down here and, you know, have a lot of confidence and, you know, a great run to build off of. So I'm really proud of how he did. And, um, you, know, the, you know, our past couple of weeks, you know, to put this car up here and land on the front stretch of high limit. Since relocating to Knoxville, Iowa from Texas, Chase Randall's picked up grilling. He hasn't driven to the high V across the street in a few weeks to buy meat to grill. So your team's been hungry for success. I think you delivered tonight. Yeah, you know, it's, it helps, you know, running good the past couple weeks. Hopefully I can get to the grocery store and, and get some stuff to grill for him to, you know, show him how much they're appreciated. But, you know, I got to thank Dennis Allball and the Iowa Barnstormers for, you know, for their huge support on this race car with Shanae Lawson chassis and uh, Morrison Racing Engines, KH Suspension, uh, my whole crew behind me, Troy and Tammy Renfro, Joe, Hess, JT, you know, Corey back home, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll go home to, to Knoxville or to Iowa tonight and, you know, get it cleaned up and hopefully, you know, finish up front tomorrow. All right, fire up that grill when you get back there. Your crew's going to be mighty hungry. That's Chase Randall finishing in third. Brad Sweet, not Brad Day, Brad Sweet finishes in second. And Corey Day gets it done for the fourth time in 2024 with Kubota High Limit Racing.